Hi, I'm with Computer Side Electronics and I'm going to be showing you all how to replace your logic board, some people call them motherboards, um, within side of a hoverboard unit that has already been determined to be bad. Okay, here we have the hoverboard. The body parts has already been detached and disassembled. And here is your uh, logic board or motherboard, whatever you may want to call it. The very first thing that we would have to do is disconnect the power to the entire hoverboard. And we want to do that by this connector right here. This connector connects from the battery, which is here, and goes through this chamber here and goes over to the logic board. So the first thing we want to do is disconnect that. The next thing you may want to go ahead and do is disconnect the Bluetooth logic board from the motherboard as you can see there are these two wires here are black, black and red which connects to the motherboard this will make it easier to go ahead and get the um, the housing out of the way so disconnect that you can move your housing out of the way now you're all clear to start disassembling uh, other connectors and also removal of the logic board you have three set of wires which has rubber insulation around them to protect them. This rubber insulation is protect the wires from getting frayed or damaged going through this chamber here. You have this set here, this set here, and this set. You have these three sets here that runs through this chamber and they go over to the other side of them hoverboard for the posture sensor connection and everything to work this side so we want to go ahead and start disconnecting these these are primarily the main thing that you want to make sure that you have detached from the harnesses because sim simply because these are the first things you want to pull through the chamber here when disconnecting these wires here you want to make sure that you pay pay close attention to the usually they're color coordinated this particular hoverboard has yellow to yellow green to green and blue to blue some hoverboards are wired differently because of the way the motor is built inside of the hoverboard so make sure you pay close attention to how these colors are coordinated these wires goes to the motor on this wheel, the left side, you also have the same thing over here, which are shorter and they connect to the motherboard. These wires go to the motor, to this wheel. The motor is built inside of the wheel. So pay close attention to how these wires are color coordinated and connected. Okay, I have disconnected these three wires that goes to this motor. And these three set of wires are ready to be pulled through the chamber. While you're at it, you might as well go ahead and disconnect the other side as well. Okay, now that those are detached, you can put them over to the side. Also on this side, you want to go ahead and detach the harnesses on this side as well. Just like on the other side, you got three connections to disconnect. You have three connections to disconnect on this side as well. And these harnesses are pretty much numbered by pin. So when you're putting it back together, it'll be kind of simple to figure out where they go. Cause they all, fit where they're supposed to go. There's no particular 
way you can actually reconnect the harness is wrong. All right, now we have all the wires detached from their harnesses. We can now start pulling these three through the chamber. The first set of wires you wanna pull through is the ones that connect to the motor, simply because these are narrow to go through this chamber. These have bigger ends on them, so you want to remove this to make room for these two. So, let's see what we got here. And last but not least, you have your power harness, which connects to the battery. You want to go ahead and pull that through. And now the logic board or motherboard is ready to come out. I've already taken the screws out on this particular board so that it's more accessible and easier to move. You have four screws on the logic board. You have this one here, this one here, there will be one here, so you can see that there's one here and then you have one here do not bother these screws here to the transistors because they will not detach the motherboard okay, here's our new motherboard we want to go ahead and start preparing this to be installed the first thing you want to do is run these three units through this chamber here. These three wire harnesses are important to run first because they're the hardest part of the job. With this, you kind of want to place your motherboard kind of in the facility of the area where you want it to be, where it's supposed to go and it's supposed to be placed anyway. So, say it you want to go ahead and run these because they're the narrower narrowest um, harness to make room for these two so you want to feed this through the chamber first start feeding the other wire harnesses through the chamber. Okay, once you have those three harnesses fed through, make this power harness the last harness you want to feed because it's the shortest. And in order to feed this through the chamber, the logic board has to be already be in place. So let me set this motherboard in place and we'll then feed the wire harness through. Okay, I have placed the motherboard or logic board in place. Don't screw it down yet because you're gonna still need it to be loose to have some play to move around. Now you want to feed the power harness through the chamber. Let's see if we can get this thing in here.
now we have the power harness and all the other three harnesses fed through but we don't want to hook power up to the battery or the logic board let that be the last thing you do the first thing we want to do is hook up the motor harness then we can hook up these two harnesses okay we have our motors harness hooked up we have the green to green yellow to yellow blue to blue also on the other side yellow to yellow blue to blue and gray to green okay now we want to start hooking up our other harnesses which is harnesses that goes to the led lights the posture sensor This is a four pin, so you want to make sure you match this up with a four pin. Like I say, it's not a wrong way to connect these harnesses. Okay, now we have our five pin harness connected, four pin harness connected on this side, which is the side of the battery. We also have our four pin connected and our five pin connected on this side. Now, let's see what else we need to hook up. Here is the Bluetooth. Some hoverboards will come with Bluetooth capabilities, some on would not. Also, when replacing your motherboard, you have to make sure that you have a motherboard that has the Bluetooth capability um, set of wires built into the motherboard. This particular motherboard has Bluetooth connector simply because it was being replaced by a motherboard that had Bluetooth connectors. If you get a logic board or motherboard that doesn't have this Bluetooth connector, it will still work, but you will not be able to hook up the Bluetooth and power on the Bluetooth without this connector. So when you're ordering your, hover, your uh, logic board for your hoverboard, make sure that you order one that has the Bluetooth connector to it if you have a Bluetooth motherboard. So let's hook up the Bluetooth to the Bluetooth logic board. Okay, this is your Bluetooth logic board, which is attached to this particular house, this side of the housing, usually where the speaker is located. And it's a two pin connector. Okay, now all of our wires is pretty much hooked up and connected. Just check to make sure, verify that all your wires are hooked up before you actually hook up the power harness. Now we want to go ahead and drill in our screws for our logic board to screw it down to the frame of the motherboard. Okay, we have the screws in place. Let's drill these screws down. Okay, now our hoverboard, the logic board is actually screwed down. After you have made sure all your wires are tightly connected and everything is pretty much in place, you want to go ahead and test the new motherboard to make sure that it is uh, a good motherboard. Now you can do this one or two ways. You can either Go with this pin here, this socket here, where the um, two wire pin connects to and pretty much short it out. And it comes on. So we know this motherboard or logic board is good. So once we've determined that, we wanna go ahead and short it out again. And that turns it off. Or you could just go ahead and temporarily hook up your power button to the two pin harness here and press the power button Not spun. make sure that it turns on 
and we're good to go. So this motherboard, once again, is good. Disconnect your power button because you need it out the way. If the battery is dead and there's no juice on the battery to test the um, um, logic board, you want to go ahead and connect your power and charging port harness to the motherboard, which is here. And it is pretty much a four pin connector. As you can see here, that's four wires. So you just want to plug that in here. Once you have that plugged in, hook a good charger to it, charge the battery, and you can test the logic board and motherboard to make sure that it's good that way as well. Once you have determined that the new logic board is good and not defective, you want to make sure that your wires are pretty much balled up and tucked in so that when you put the housing back onto the motherboard, on back onto the hoverboard, it is um, it doesn't pinch or um, cut through any wires. These particular wires here goes to the LED lights and you want to make sure that they are in the little notch here. As you can see, there's a little notch here, bend them in. Make sure they're tucked out of the way. Make sure they're not in the interference with any of the screw holes. Same thing on this side. Tuck these wires in to the little notch that's on the frame. Make sure that they are out of the way of the screw holes as well. Okay. Now it's time to put the housing back onto the motherboard. And then our next step will be to calibrate it since this is a new logic board. When calibrating your hoverboard, um, you want to pretty much make sure that it is straight. I primarily try to use these lines here to line it up so that it's calibrated correctly. Okay, once you have determined that it is straight, You want to go through and press the power button in and you want to hold it. Max burn. Don't let go of the power button. It's gonna beat one time. And then if the lights are gonna flash one time and then the lights are gonna continuously flash. At this point, you can let go of the power button and it's in calibration mode. It is pretty much lined up and set once you have determined that it is parallel and straight, you want to go ahead, press the power button to turn it off. And then you can turn it back on. Max burn. And your hoverboard is calibrated. As you can see, I've put the housing back together. I've calibrated it. Now it's time to test it out and make sure that it's ready to go. Okay, now we're gonna test it out. So far, everything is working like it's supposed to. So there you have it. You have replaced your logic board with a new logic board. Make sure all the wires out the way, put the housing back together and calibrated it. Thank you for watching my video.